Words and silence are not so different after all. Words are also almost empty, but not quite. There is always something there, something murmuring deep within them, in the dark gloom at the bottom of the grid in their gutter. Some trip, 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 echoing. Do you have life insurance? Don't worry, I'm not going to sell you any. Seeing as you are not there, I'll have a rest. I'll tell you a story while I'm taking it easy. You can erase this message if you like, or listen. It's up to you. There was once a woman who worked in a call center a place where people made and took phone calls. The woman telephoned people who lived in another country, a country far away from her own. She felt she could hear the sound of distance on the phone lines, particularly during pauses. A kind of hum that the satellite added. The infinite drone of outer space. She could speak the language of the country far away very well better than some of the people who lived there. She made calls to try to sell people insurance. The people did not like the calls though. They did not like any strangers calling them and they did not want to be told that they had not insured their life. They told her to fuck off or left her hanging on the phone. They would put the phone down and pretend to go and get the head of the household who would never arrive. She did not mind if this happened, as it gave her a rest. The company the woman worked for used auto dial telephones. This meant that when she finished a call, the machine would dial the next number as soon as she had put the receiver down. So she never got a rest. She never had a chance to stop. Unless people left her hanging on the phone as a joke, or if she got through to an answer machine. If she struck lucky and her call did go to an answer machine, then she would be rewarded with a moment of silence, a chance to take hold of her time again. The people she telephoned in the country far away, when they listened to their messages later, would always be puzzled by her message. A long recording of nothing. Well, not nothing exactly, nearly nothing, except for the faint sound of a call center in the background the faint sound of many distant hands tapping on keyboards and many distant voices talking on the phone. She was told by the people who ran the call center that she had to try to be more like the people in the country far away so that they would stop putting down the phone and maybe even start to buy some insurance. So, she was given lessons in the culture and history of the country far away and she was given a name like the names in the country far away and she was given a personality like the persons in the country far away consisting of a list of favorite things to talk about if the people wanted to chat with her things from their own country that they would understand a favorite food, sport, pop singer, television program her voice was changed so that she could pronounce words like them. After a while, she started to enjoy changing herself in this way. So much so that she began to change herself even more than the supervisor in the call center asked her to. You 
person every day. For each person she became, she would create an elaborate story. One person she invented was an old retired female jockey who lived in a disused water tank in an ivy-covered abandoned railway station in the quiet countryside of the country far away. This old woman made her living through writing children's stories about eccentric country folk and their animal friends. It was beautifully peaceful in a railway station. She loved the silence, the fact that she did not have to speak to anyone for months on end. The old woman ate blue-veined cheese made from her own cows. Cows, all named after batters of old forgotten wars, who all wore woolen socks on their hooves to keep the noise down if they crossed the tarmac road. When the call center woman, the woman who had invented all this, called people in the country far away, she sometimes pretended to be this old woman. In her whispering voice, she asked people about their favorite type of jam and read out excerpts of her own children's stories to them. She told them in an intimate whisper that she was ringing from a water tank just down the road from them and that it was dark and quiet inside and that it smelled of a favorite smell. The smell of wet rust. in the call center originally came from a small town on the coast of a country. Every time she returned to the town, she would notice the clock in the main railway station, stuck at 18 minutes past 4. Her town had declined so much over the years that it ceased to care about matters such as railway clocks. When she saw the clock, she always tried to imagine the moment when it stopped ticking years before. Maybe that was the moment when the town was left behind. The moment that time itself stopped for the whole town. It was said that the clock had stopped in the great flood. When she was a child, an enormous wave flooded the whole town, destroying everything near the seafront. Many people were killed. Afterwards, the scientists were able to tell how fast the wave had reached certain parts of the town by the clocks and watches found in the wreckage. Each one stopped at the moment the salt water drowned its intricate mechanism. The call center worker knew very well the value of time. It was a precious, jewel-like thing. And thinking of this one day, she asked a person she was calling this question. What if a flood swept through the whole world? A flood that did not drown people but only drown things, including all of the complex and vulnerable clock workings everywhere. And by doing this, what if it also wiped time away? What if, because of the end of all the clocks, the word for time itself was then not needed anymore, so that time would not be spoken of at all? As something valuable, which can be wasted, which can be saved? She told all this to the person on the other end of the line who, after listening quietly, said he had to go and get the head of the household. He rested the phone on his hallway table and walked away. to be picked up again, she thought about the roaring flood that would sweep away time. After it eventually subsides, she thought, 
the flat will leave nothing of itself, nothing but harmless puddles trickling away down the grids into a vast silence. But would not the trickling, even one drip, be more than nothing? Is there not always something inside silence? Something murmuring? If you really listen hard enough, something